Over the past decade, we've stayed in hundreds of unique rental properties around the globe. So we've partnered with Airbnb to create a series called Meet Your Host. Their platform has seen tremendous success for hosts of unique stays. We'll be visiting these unique properties around the world and hearing from the people who brought them to life. Today, I am just outside of Tampa, Florida, where I'm meeting up with Jana and Mika, Airbnb hosts to three unique stays. I'm actually walking down the street where these unique stays are located. You would never guess, but they're here and we're gonna go and check them out. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mika. Nice to meet you. Jana. Yes. This is amazing. This is so beautiful and I can't wait for you guys to share it with us. I think we should start just like, tell me a little bit about this property and how long you've had it and just like the overall layout and design. We've been here for three years. We moved here initially. We were in the tiny house over there, small family. Um, grew out of it though. We have two boys. So when we had our second, um, tiny house was a little bit too small. So we decided we needed to, to upgrade and it was always the plan to start an Airbnb with the tiny house, like when we bought it. Um, so we, we found this property, we were actually living in Maine at the time and saw it online and immediately knew it was the one. We didn't even have to see it. Um, we just, we, we came here, made an offer and, and moved in, started with that. It worked so well that we got the streamline and added it as a second and then added a third, probably about a year ago with our garage apartment. And we're in the process now of building our fourth. We're renovating a 1966 houseboat. I, I like the like communal feel of it as well, right? Like and, and there's like things for kids to do, so it's very like community based. The types of people that like are attracted to a place like this are pretty cool people and we've hosted people from all over the world. Um, so often we'll we'll have like hangouts by the fire pit and you know, I've like grilled mushrooms with a guy from Germany and you know, it's just like stuff like that. So ten people who don't want that experience, we're trying to be really upfront with that in the way that we build our listing. So it's not a surprise and the people that come here, come here for that experience. First of all, Streamline, like it looks so similar to an Airstream. Did you guys get it as is or did you gut it and renovate it yourself? So we thought it was an Airstream when we bought it. It was like in the description. We were newbies. It looks exactly yeah, we didn't know, like, we had honestly, no idea. And then we so got similar. in and then I looked at the, I'm like, oh, that's not an Airstream, um, but we didn't know. And um, we got it from this really wonderful, like super hippie couple. Um, and they, they were looking to sell it really quick. Um, and so they had already gutted it, but we, they just like wanted to do something different. And so we, it was the perfect thing for us just to be able to put our spin on it. Wow, this is so cool. This is beautiful. So it's a 1971 Imperial Streamline. I love how spacious it is. That's the first thing I notice. It's a tiny space, but it doesn't feel like a tiny space. And this kitchen, I've never seen anything built like this in like an Airstream or Streamline. Um, usually you just have it like against the wall, but I like, like the L shape. The guy that we bought it from built this. Um, so and we did we loved it so much that we didn't want to change it. I love this wall, and this is a couch that converts into like someone can sleep here as well. The pillows come off and you can like sleep that way. Most other people co sleep though. It's like yeah. couples or couple with a small <laughs> kid. It's a king size California. California, California king. king. Yeah. Literally okay. wall to wall. Tell me more about the design. Like what made you want to put certain features in here? What like kind of overall? feel were you going for when you were doing it? Yeah, well, I mean, first thing, like removing the bathroom to make mm -hmm. it like as open of a space as possible, because if you have something right in the middle, then you really separate your spaces and it feels a lot smaller than it is. So that was first. And then you got wheel wells to deal with at that point. So like, what do you do there? You know, we've got a cabinet and some storage. This is just like, you know, cleaning supplies or whatever. So it's just easy for us as hosts. And all this is original, like this storage. We like added these simple like sliding, you know, this was updated a little bit, but that's the trick with the small spaces. Lots of windows, bright light, and then storage. Yeah. White and walls. white walls. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So we have a projector in that okay, cabinet. You just it slide is. it back and then this comes down over the mirror and then you have a uh, TV. Yeah. And then people like we the bed is high, so this is people will slide their suitcases mm -hmm. in. So it's that's always a struggle. Like where do you put your suitcase? So under the bed. Yeah. So we really wanted this space to be similar to our tiny house, and so that we walked in. So it's like 
you're you feel it feels cozy and comfortable um, and it has like elements of like rest and um, like green calming elements so I really thought about the pieces I would put in um, to make it feel just like oh, I, can, I can just I can't wait to just like lay on the bed you know um, so that was the, that was the theme I was going for it was just bright and relaxing and cozy. And yes. the nice thing about small spaces too is they kind of like force you out into the world. And so like it's a beautiful cozy space, but you also get to experience outdoors. And you know, that's why people come to Florida anyway. So they naturally just, you spend more time out with people, your neighbors, like the people you came with. Um, and that's one of the magical pieces about Tiny Life, I think too. So. If you're wondering where the toilet and shower are, there's a beautiful washroom located just outside of the Streamline for Streamline renters only. And it has a sweet bathtub. Now, let's go check out the tiny house. Tiny house. Nice. Again, it, it's tiny, but it doesn't feel tiny. Yeah, immediately, like the white walls, the high ceilings makes it feel like you're in a bigger space than you actually are in. How big is this tiny house exactly? 357 square feet. And you lived in this before you, you listed it on Airbnb? Yes, four of us and, um, and a dog. I got the opportunity with work to move to San Francisco for a company I was working with. And as a part of that, they were giving me a stipend to like live. So they covered our rent for a year. And instead of, you know, in San Francisco, it's like 3,500 bucks for like a studio apartment. So instead of just wasting the money on that, we decided to build a tiny house. And that's how we like growth hacked San Francisco. So we paid this off. Um, in several years um, as our family grew we always knew that we wanted this to be an Airbnb um, so when it when the time came we had we tried it with two kids for a while and like that rope that was our bassinet we used to like have our baby sleep there and it, we would raise it up when it was not in use um, so there's still like remnants of when we used to live here so this can actually sleep you know two to three up there depending on the small family for Five, six, we've had five, six people staying here. Wow. I have to ask about this because it's beautiful. The banister of the stairs. Yeah, I made that. We found, we went to like a, a beach around the corner that had a lot of driftwood. And as a family, we went and picked out all of the driftwood pieces that we wanted and then made a railing out of it. So butcher bought countertops, um, they are cheap and pretty and kind of add that like pop of natural like wood tones to mm -hmm. the white space. You gotta have a big sink. I think that's part of like enjoying life. So you have a double sink and just make little bits of like luxury in a tiny space go a long way. So you try to, you know, and that's another benefit of a tiny space is you can afford to have little bits of, of luxury in a, in a space. So. It's, it's a big kitchen. It's a full kitchen. Yeah. You got everything yeah. you need. You got an oven, a stove top, a full size fridge, which is always a plus and lots of storage space. And you have a full bathroom in the back, right? Shower, yeah. Shower. washer, dryer, mm -hmm. combo. Sink. <laughs> the idea of just building like another revenue stream for us um, was always something that we wanted to do and this is such a unique space that we knew there would be demand for it just because it's all over social media and people love sort of that tiny house um, lifestyle and so um, we, we you know with this property it was a really simple it was all landscaped in a way that we kind of could just pull in and pop up so it took now what do you think like a month of work two months yeah. of work to like get us up and running um, and we've been fully booked like every night pretty much like 98 percent since and it's been how how long now Two and a half years. Wow. Uh, and we've had, you know, I think over 600 reviews in that amount of time. We're like, it's booked all year round. I feel like we've hit like a secret because these spaces, being that they're so small and unique, they're affordable, but very marketable. Cause like people really want that experience and they're really beautiful and it's easy to stand out amongst everyone else. With unique spaces, it's really easy to, um, to get out there in a way that people really want to have that experience. The tiny house cost us around 50 grand to build and we had it contracted. So if you built it yourself, you could do it for probably half that, but contracted it's about, about what we paid. Um, and it consistently makes like five grand a month. In the Airstream, we purchased that for eight, thousand nine nine thousand and then we probably put you know two to three into it and and that one actually three. makes more than this one 
Um, so that one was incredible ROI. This one is already, you know, certainly made back its money. And we were already paying our mortgage with just the tiny house. So everything we've done since then has just been like income for us. I host and I um, stay home with my kids. So it offers me a way to do both and to meet people and to make people really happy. So it, for me personally, it's just like, a lot of my friends are like, how do you do it? I'm like, I wouldn't, like this is, this is like what I'm meant to do. I like that income. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's nice, but in, in all seriousness, like I, with the last few years I've been working a full-time job and building these along the way got us to a place where I could take a jump and not have a day job anymore and start to focus on building my own business. So now I have a marketing agency and the having this system has given us the opportunity to do that without risks because a lot of people find it hard to make that jump especially if, with, when you have kids and so i'm really grateful um, it's been an easy way to generate a pretty good amount of income What's extra unique about this space is there are three unique stays that you can experience. So when you're here, there are other guests as well, other like-minded people, travelers that want unique experiences, and it allows you to meet other people. This space doesn't just benefit the hosts, it also benefits the guests as well.